<laughs> is there like swear words on here and like like a lot of bad stuff? This is like getting one of those tattoos, like the Asian yeah. tattoos. You don't know what it actually means. You know. um, okay, so this yeah, it's cuneiform. That's proper pronunciation. Apparently, I've just been corrected. Um, and this is one of the oldest um, written, I guess, languages. It's a bunch of pictographs or pictograms. Uh, it's about like 3,000 years old. There was about 1,000 when it started off. This was like, uh, so documentation essentially is communication. Um, and this is, again, I want to showcase something that was super old as far as like one of the first um, times that we started documenting uh, things as, as, as a human race. Um, and then we sort of moved on from this. We did, you know, cave paintings. Um, we start, you know, documenting things on uh, scrolls, uh, books, uh, and then we took pictures, and then finally we got to, you know, cats on laptops. <laughs> and uh, then we had Inception with cats watching cats on iPads. <laughs> so, you know, we, we definitely evolved, uh, and uh, our documentation and the, the things that we care about and we care about communicating have evolved, um, especially with lots of cats as Dave's talk shit. Um, so you're probably like, whoa, documentation. Um, especially like this guy, because I watch a lot of ancient aliens, or what, it's ancient, yeah, it's ancient aliens, I think, um, on the History Channel, which isn't a real show, and it's not real history. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but we got to problem. We got a problem with documenting uh, user interfaces. Um, we got a problem with documentation in general. Uh, how do we do it? Um, the communication is really broken. Um, as far as the tools that we have right now to, to, to document things and to document our work. So a typical workflow, um, as you guys may know, you, if you work with other people, you get this cool designer, hipster designer number one, <laughs> right? And he designs something, comes up with this awesome concept, he has all these ideas in his head, and then he passes it off to Beardo, or the developer. <laughs> and the developer goes and he executes on it, he creates functionality. Uh, these two guys work together. Um, and then there's been this renaissance, um, the invention of the designer developer, right? He looks kind of like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And I know there's a lot of guys here that look like this. Right? A lot of them are my friends. And just to take note, I am one of these jerks. Like, I am definitely, or I feel like I fall into the category of somebody that crosses the boundary of design and development. And I like to look at user experience holistically, um, and I like to, uh, you know, and I would like to be able to document um, interaction uh, properly in some way. So, uh, information is siloed in that paradigm, in that designer gives off, hands off, you know, their uh, ideas to someone, and uh, this isn't really scalable. Um, it's good if, you know, front-end developer, designer, works really good if the, he's the only person working on a project, and then the project potentially has no longevity to it, um, but essentially the information is siloed. Um, and, you know, you, it's going to be very hard to extract that for uh, somebody new that's coming on. So new collaborators will get lost when they jump onto a project. The ramp up time for them is ridiculous if you don't have good documentation. So, and uh, they get lost in more than one way. They also just don't know where to find things, they don't know how to work with uh, things. So you get, um, so yeah, so the key here is communication is key to learning new concepts. <coughs> You don't want scenarios like this. Because <laughs> right, he doesn't know what's going to happen doing that. Um, or situations where you think, um, or where you don't understand something, um, or that you've been told something else, or you have a you know, a bad understanding of what's at play, and that would be something like this. Um, airplanes don't uh, <laughs> actually, or spoons don't actually sound like airplanes. Um, I love that face. Um, so, documentation should be. So, what should it be? Like, let's have some references to, to, to what it should be, or the best, uh, the best it can be. Um, should be concise. Um, documentation should be descriptive. Um, it should be standard. There should be a way that um, it's easy, you know, where you're going to find things. Um, easy to maintain, especially, um, because that way it will stay up to date if it's easy to do. Um, and it doesn't affect your workflow. This is actually something that I talked to Paul Irish about last night, um, and he said this was a key, and so I just added it um, this morning. Um, essentially, for anybody to actually do any documentation as they go or um, afterwards, it, it should not affect your workflow, or else, you know, to 
developers and designers will not actually do it. So I think this is a key to what a good tool would provide you um, uh, to have the best documentation experience. <coughs> so uh, what it all boils down to is a big win with uh, little effort. So who does documentation well? Um, there's a couple of great projects, Ember, JS, I think Yahuda Katz is going to be here at some point if you want to talk to him about Ember. Um, and then Bootstrap does a really good job um, at also documenting the, especially Bootstrap does a really good job at documenting the UI aspect of it, uh, HTML and CSS. It's very easy to see what something's going to look like uh, when you add a class to it um, or when you change the state of some sort of button. Um, it's really great. And has great documentation. Uh, Foundation also has, they just came out with Foundation 4. Um, it's amazing, they have great documentation. Backbone also, Backbone.js, if you guys uh, use uh, that, you've probably gone through the docs, I think they have great documentation. Um, and GitHub also has a style guide, which, awesome. <laughs> uh, which also has um, uh, amazing sort of UI documentation, similar to Bootstraps. Um, so I, I want to go through uh, the documentation type. So all those examples show you a wider arrangement of sort of different types of documentation. Um, the first is sort of the conceptual. Um, you can come up with a concept of, like, let's say, uh, responsive web design. It's definitely a concept that you can talk about, uh, you know, and how things adapt. Um, you can write documentation in that way that you talk about a concept that your, uh, your application or your project implements. And tutorial is more a step-by-step -step guide to actually using something. Um, it's curated, again, similar to the conceptual uh, level documentation. Um, so there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of effort in those two first two categories. Um, the third type of documentation um, is reference. So you'll find a lot of APIs, like API documentation, um, is very much reference uh, material. It very much just points out, uh, you know, what X does and um, and how we implement it on a very uh, shallow basis. Not so much tutorial, but literally reference reference guide. So, <coughs> what I find is reference, or API documentation, um, is the bare minimum. So if we look at most projects, they always have some sort of documentation about how to actually implement, um, uh, especially uh, programming uh, projects, or, or primarily uh, libraries or frameworks, they have a bare minimum of some sort of API documentation. So you at least know what's available to you and what you can use. So this is our bare minimum. So this is kind of what I'm going to focus on as well, because the other two, uh, the conceptual and the tutorial based documentation, um, it requires a lot of work. Um, and I think this is something that we can get away with um, through a lot of automation. So uh, you'll notice that a lot of JavaScript programs, uh, you know, Python, all the sort of programming languages have um, generators. So a good one, or a couple good ones. Uh, I've never actually used this, so I don't know exactly. Anybody use YUI doc? One person? Yeah. Okay, yeah, do you, do you use YUI? And you're on jQuery? No? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, no. Uh, so uh, I've looked up a couple of these. Uh, YUI docs seems like a good one. Um, EXT docs, uh, natural docs, which is for like PHP. Um, oh, no. Natural docs is actually for, yeah, it's for a bunch of different languages. Um, PHP docs, um, Tom doc for Ruby, uh, Doco for CoffeeScript. Um, and you'll notice the same thing throughout all these guys is that they actually do comment parsing. So the biggest thing here is that they can generate um, documentation for you uh, based on if you structure your comments in a certain way. So this is something you can do on the go. It's easy to maintain and it's easy to keep up to date. Um, and it generates really good documentation for you. And this is, these are all examples of uh, documentation tools that are found um, sort of for the developer. Um, but I want to focus on you know, that hybrid guy um, that is crossing that crossing that chasm, crossing the chasm. Any marketers here? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so this is what a comment block would look like. Uh, this is a typical one uh, that would be in like JavaScript. Um, this is sort of how you declare um, uh, a class and uh, parameters and, and what things are returned. This sort of tells uh, somebody else that comes into your project 
uh, what's going on within the function or uh, again the code that's below it. So this is really key uh, to onboarding new people because they'll have this documentation not only in the actual file, but there will be some sort of tool that you're able to generate um, you know, uh, API reference uh, for uh, web-based or something like something along those lines. So, <coughs> what about the UI? Um, you're sitting here, I hope, because you guys believe that there is a problem with documenting uh, UI. Yes? No? Anybody think there's not a problem? You have tools that you don't know about? Um, I've scoured looking for tools that are similar to um, what we have for JavaScript. Um, to do UI documentation, and really good UI documentation. So, uh, I've noticed that it's really hard. It's not an easy task to take on. Um, UI documentation uh, is really hard for a few reasons, because um, it requires a lot of context. Um, it, it requires that you know where you are, different states, um, different inheritance. Um, you also need visual cues to really document UI well. You really need an example there, uh, whereas in a lot of you know, the JavaScript uh, uh, documentation tools, they, they just output uh, text. Um, so we would like to have you know, maybe pictures, um, and video associated with this. So that's sort of a hybrid model. Um, and it's also UI documentation is hard because it involves multiple languages. You have HTML, CSS, and JS all working together in a lot of, a lot of times um, to create that experience, to create that uh, piece of UI and UX. So the key that we're gonna focus on um, is gonna be CSS. Right now, uh, HTML, a lot of people say CSS is self-documenting. I will fight you to the death about that. Um, I know a lot of people that have looked through other people's CSS and they have no clue what's going on. Um, so the key here is I, I want to focus on CSS because it's been a bit of a wild west for a long time. I'm sure uh, you guys can go check out the jQuerytio website CSS and you will laugh at me and come up to me and want to hit me over the head. Uh, I would do the same to your projects. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, but it's a bit of a wild west. We've been sort of uh, living without a lot of standards in a lot of ways. There's been some uh, tools, which I don't have a slide up here, but CSS Lint. Does anybody use that tool? Like on a regular basis, the, the few people? You use it all the time? That's awesome, okay. So it, that can actually be integrated into your workflow, um, and not a lot of people have done it. They've done a lot of work um, to actually make that the CSS linting um, a very much available work in your, uh, you know, your IDE or wherever you want it, and can be baked into your, uh, your development workflow. So, so let's clean up the wild west. I want to propose to you guys um, uh, something here. But, but first, I'm going to talk about one, one thing. Um, KSS was a project started by Kyle Neath at GitHub. This was the only tool I found. There was, there was one tool that I found um, out of all my searching uh, past few months. Um, KSS was built to essentially do what I'm talking about, which is document CSS. Um, and Basically, Kyle outlines a structure or a style guide to help uh, parse and create documentation for, for UI. Um, so this is what uh, the website is, if you want to go check it out. It's a Ruby gem, um, so um, uh, it's really cool. It's a really cool project. It's sort of what kickstarted uh, some ideas that I have and will show you guys. But, so this is what actually a KSS style guide would look like. So, and by style guide, I mean a, a comment block. Um, so this is the structure that you would need to maintain while you're documenting your CSS, while you're writing your CSS. Um, uh, so you can see that he's put a description, some states of that element that he's going to style just underneath it. Um, he also has some style guide um, uh, sort of section document, uh, documentation. So, so this is what this kind of looks like. It's very similar to what you saw uh, before um, this is actually, I think, taken from the less or SAS version. Um, so, so it's pretty good. And, and this is sort of an example. Um, actually, you can go grab the example at wired, uh, warpspire.com slash KSS. So this is actually an example of what gets generated. Uh, so it looks really pretty. It's beautiful. 
it gives you examples of you know what the classes are that you can uh, add to change state. That's like one of the keys here, as well as gives you example code um, that uh, that basically uh, tells you how to implement the UI. Um, so the pros with KSS uh, I found were that it dynamically generates an object, so a common object that you can use in any way you want. Um, enforces, enforces structured commenting. So this is something we need to clean up the wild west um, of CSS. And encourages documentation of state, which I think is really important because uh, that's, it's really good to have some form of context being uh, uh, documented. And it also reduces the documentation redundancy. So you don't have doc, uh, basically documentation inside of your CSS and then uh, also somewhere else. Like it's the, you know, you don't, aren't reduced, or you aren't duplicating work that you've done uh, when you use uh, this generator. So it also works with SAS and less. So if you guys use preprocessors, it's great for that. Um, and pretty just awesome. So there's a couple cons. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, multi-step process. So KSS doesn't actually uh, generate all documentation for you in one process. Um, it sort of does it in two. You have to sort of define um, your templates and sort of uh, generate the documentation on your own. So it's a multi-step process. Um, commenting guideline isn't flexible. You'll notice that uh, if you had changed or added anything into that comment, um, it, you know, it would start to break up um, it's very uh, restrictive in the guideline of how you can actually write your uh, comments. And then, and as well as uh, you would have to change the parser, essentially if you ever change the spec, which we know isn't very scalable, and uh, I'm trying to come up with a solution that's long term for us. So it also do, it doesn't address the full capacity of context, um, and it doesn't address the full you know, capacity of inheritance which are two big problems that if anybody deals with CSS, you understand our problem of specificity, uh, selectors and inheritance are, are all issues you run into debugging uh, CSS. So can we do better? Uh, can we, can we do, make a better tool uh, to help us document our UI? <laughs> Is that Chris? <laughs> What, no, that was you? You sound just like a coworker of mine who's so negative, he's probably in the room too. I, <laughs> I love him though, Chris. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah I, the answer is yes, okay. Long pause was supposed to be like drum and roll type thing. Yes, I think we can do better um, as a community. Um, and I think I'm trying to put together something that's better. So I want to introduce DSS. Uh, and it doesn't, so KSS was actually named after Kyle, KSS. Uh, DSS is not named after Darcy. Let me put the, this way. It's, it's documented style sheets. Just so happens to start with a D. So, I think, hey, I have a great name. What? At Darcy. Um, so, doc <laughs> so, documented style sheets is essentially a um, proposal, uh, oh, sorry, a, document a documentation tool which includes um, a style guide similar to KSS. Um, uh, that's a little bit more flexible. Um, a comment parser, again, similar to KSS, to actually help you get that, uh, that work, or sorry, to get that um, work done to actually document uh, automatically through automation. Um, the pros of DSS are definitely that it's a single step build process. We've taken everything and we want to make sure that uh, it's easy for you guys to literally generate uh, documentation in one step and include it into any project or any kind of build task you have. And uh, it's flexible. It's got a flexible style guide um, compared to that restrictive one. Um, it also has template support, so you can do that hybrid model if you want, which is very much what uh, KSS is aimed at. Um, but you can have that you know, um, mix of sort of guided um, tutorial or conceptual um, documentation mixed in with the uh, generated documentation. And it's a Grunt.js plugin if anybody uses Grunt. Nice. Anybody? Ooh. Yeah, cool. You got the right confidence. Uh, so it's a Grunt.js plugin, so you can build it right in. It's a task. Um, so 
the cons of DSS. I'm going to tell I'm telling you why it's so great. I'm actually going to tell you why it sucks. Um, so it actually 